Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. I hope you can hear the background noise of the rain. So this is the right mandibular deciduous first molar and this is the left mandibular deciduous molar. These deciduous molars, they perform grinding function along with the other deciduous molars. This tooth, it erupts into the oral cavity by the age of 16 months and the root it is completed by the age of two and a half years. This tooth it is exfoliated or the shedding of this, uh, this tooth is around the age of 10 to 11 years and by this age this tooth it is replaced by the mandibular first premolar. Now we will discuss the morphology of this tooth from in various aspects. So this is the buccal aspect. So from the buccal aspect, the tooth, it has two cusps. This cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp. And this cusp, the smaller one, is the distobuccal cusp. The mesiobuccal cusp, it is larger and higher as compared to the smaller distobuccal cusp. The mes this is the mesial outline of the tooth. And the mesial outline, it is higher and it is relatively straight as compared to distal outline which is smaller and it is more convex. The tooth it has the tooth it has two roots this is the mesial root and this is the distal root so the roots of this tooth it is long and they are cylinder. In the apical third, the roots, they spread beyond the outlines of the crown, especially the distal root. So this is the lingual aspect. So this pointed cusp is the mesiolingual cusp and this smaller cusp is the distolingual cusp. So the mesiolingual cusp, it is sharp and it is larger as compared to the distolingual cusp. Part of the two buccal cusp the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal, they are slightly visible in the background. The tooth, it tapers towards the lingual side, so the mesiodistal width of the crown and the root, it is slightly less on the lingual aspect. The, the cervical line, it is straight on the lingual aspect. This is the mesiobuccal cusp and this is the mesiolingual cusp. And this ridge that unite the two cusp is the mesial marginal ridge. There's a curvature or there's a bulge in the cervical third of the crown, especially on the buccal aspect. This is the mesial root, and you can notice that the mesial root it is broad and it is it has a square outline sometime a developmental depression and yes a small developmental depression is there on the mesial surface of the root this is a distal aspect of the tooth this is the distobuccal cusp and this cusp smaller one is the distolingual cusp you can see some cusps in the background you can see the mesiobuccal and the mesiolingual cusp in the background this is a distal marginal ridge that connect the distobuccal with the distolingual cusp and it is also not very well developed. Part of the mesial root it is visible from the distal aspect because the distal root it is not very well developed. This cusp is the mesiolingual cusp which is the, which is the most well developed cusp followed by the mesiobuccal cusp. You can see a prominence on the mesiobuccal region. So this is a prominence in the mesiobuccal region. The most well developed cusp is the mesiolingual cusp. So this pointed part is the mesiolingual cusp followed by and it is the largest cusp. The second largest cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp, distobuccal cusp and this is smaller one is the distolingual cusp. There are developmental depressions on the occlusal surface. For example, this is the central fossa. This, this 
triangular fossa is the mesial triangular fossa and this the smaller fossa over here is the distal triangular fossa. So there are numerous developmental and supplementary grooves on the occlusal surface which are very much not much clear in this model. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. Uh, kindly do check out the links in the description of this video. Uh, thank you so much and stay blessed.